Thiruvananthapuram, a city that holds within its heart a treasure trove of history and spirituality. A city named after the sacred flower of Vishnu, the preserver of the cosmos, it is a place where the divine and the earthly coexist in harmony. Here nestled amidst the bustling streets and the calming shores lies the Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple, a sanctuary of peace and devotion. This temple is not just a place of worship, it is a spiritual haven where the soul finds solace. It is a beacon of faith drawing pilgrims and devotees from all corners of the world. It is a testament to the enduring legacy of the Hindu faith and the rich cultural tapestry of Kerala, a state known for its vibrant traditions and rituals. The temple stands as a symbol of devotion, a repository of history, and a masterpiece of art and architecture, showcasing the skill and dedication of ancient craftsmen. The temple is dedicated to Lord Vishnu, specifically in his form as Padmanabha Swami, meaning he who rests on the serpent Anantha, a representation of the eternal cosmic cycle. This deity is depicted in a unique and awe-inspiring posture, reclining on the celestial serpent Anantha, symbolizing the eternal cosmic cycle and the infinite nature of the universe. The temple's towering goparams pierce the sky, while intricate carvings adorn its walls, narrating tales from ancient scriptures and legends, each telling a story of divine intervention and cosmic order. The Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple is more than just a structure of stone and mortar. It is a living monument that breathes life into the spiritual and cultural ethos of Kerala. It is a living testament to the enduring faith and cultural heritage of the people of Kerala, a beacon of their unwavering devotion and spiritual resilience. The air is thick with the scent of incense and the resonance of prayers, transporting visitors to a realm of spirituality and tranquility where the divine presence is almost palpable and the worries of the world seem to fade away. The origins of the Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple are shrouded in myth and legend with stories passed down through generations. One popular tale speaks of the revered sage Divakara Muni, who was known for his deep spirituality and unwavering devotion. He was a devout devotee of Lord Vishnu and his fervent prayers were said to have moved the deity himself. His dedication was unparalleled and he spent countless hours in meditation and prayer. Sage Divakara Muni legend has it that Lord Vishnu appeared before me in the form of a small boy, testing my devotion and patience. The boy disappeared into an Ilanji tree and the tree then grew to an enormous size, encasing the divine child within it. This miraculous event left the sage in awe and wonder. When I pleaded with the Lord to reveal his true form, the deity complied, showing his divine presence in a magnificent way. He manifested himself in his majestic Ananda Shayana posture, reclining on the serpent Anantha, a sight that filled the sage's heart with immense joy and reverence. Overwhelmed with devotion, Divakaramuni requested that the deity shrink to a size that he could encompass with his arms, a humble request from a devoted heart. Vishnu granted his wish and the idol that the sage enshrined became the primary deity of the Sri Padmanabha Swami temple. This idol has been worshipped by countless devotees over the centuries. This legend is beautifully depicted in the temple's intricate carvings, serving as a constant reminder of the power of devotion and the divine connection between the sage and the deity. These carvings are a testament to the rich cultural and spiritual heritage of the temple, attracting pilgrims and tourists alike. The history of the Sri Padmanabha Swami temple is intricately intertwined with the rulers of Travancore. This ancient temple, dedicated to Lord Vishnu, has stood as a beacon of faith and devotion for centuries. The rulers of Travancore were not merely patrons of the temple, they held a unique and sacred relationship with it. They were considered to be the Padmanabha Dasa, the humble servants of Lord Padmanabha Swami. This title was not just ceremonial, it signified their deep spiritual commitment. This profound sense of devotion shaped their reign and their contributions to the temple. Their lives were intertwined with the temple's rituals and festivals. The royal family of Travancore played a pivotal role in the temple's development. Their dedication ensured that the temple remained a vibrant center of worship. They endowed it with vast lands, wealth, and numerous offerings. These endowments were meant to sustain the temple and its activities for generations. They also oversaw the construction of many of the temple's magnificent structures, including its towering gopurams and the sacred tanks. These architectural marvels 
stand as a testament to their devotion and vision. Their reign saw the temple flourish as a center of faith, art and culture. The temple became a hub for artists, scholars and devotees from all over the region. King Marthanda Varma, one of the most notable rulers, Maharaja Marthanda Varma is credited with unifying the kingdom of Travancore in the 18th century. His reign marked a golden era for the temple. He dedicated his kingdom to Lord Padmanabha Swami, declaring himself and his descendants to be the Padmanabha Dasa, forever bound to serve the deity. This act of dedication was a profound statement of faith and loyalty. This act cemented the bond between the royal family and the temple, a legacy that continues to this day. The temple remains a symbol of their enduring devotion and the spiritual heart of Travancore. Section 4, A Symphony in Stone. The Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple is a breathtaking masterpiece of Dravidian architecture. Its towering gopurans, or temple towers, dominate the skyline, serving as majestic gateways to the divine realm within. These intricate structures are adorned with countless sculptures and carvings depicting scenes from Hindu mythology, deities, and celestial beings. The temple complex is a sprawling labyrinth of courtyards, corridors, and shrines, each with its own unique architectural and spiritual significance. One of the most notable structures within the complex is the Otakal Mandapam. This hall, supported by a single slab of granite, is a testament to the architectural ingenuity of the time. The Otakal Mandapam, meaning single stone hall, is renowned for its exquisite craftsmanship. This hall served as a platform for musical performances and religious discourses, adding to the temple's vibrant cultural atmosphere. The temple's architecture is not merely aesthetically pleasing. It reflects a profound understanding of, of geometry, proportion and spatial design, creating an ambience of awe and reverence. Section 5 Within Sacred Walls At the heart of the Sri Padmanabhaswami Temple lies the Sanctum Sanctorum where the majestic 18-foot-long idol of Lord Padmanabhaswami rests. The deity is depicted in the Ananthashayana posture, reclining on the serpent Anantha. This pose symbolizes the eternal cosmic cycle of creation and dissolution. The idol itself is a masterpiece of craftsmanship, sculpted from a unique combination of materials known as Katu Sarkara Yogam. This special mixture, said to be made from over 12,000 shaligrams, possesses unique properties that allow the idol to be preserved for centuries. The Sanctum Sanctorum is accessible only to Hindus and there are strict dress codes and rituals that must be observed. The air within the Sanctum is thick with the scent of incense and the murmur of prayers, creating an ethereal atmosphere of devotion and serenity. Section 6. The Rhythms of Faith The Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple is a living testament to the enduring traditions of Hindu worship. Daily rituals or pujas are performed with meticulous precision by the temple priests, following ancient scriptures and customs. These rituals are a sensory experience, involving the chanting of sacred mantras, the offering of flowers and incense, and the rhythmic ringing of bells. The day begins with the Suprabhatam, the waking up ceremony, where the deity is awakened with hymns and prayers. Throughout the day, various offerings are made, including food, clothing, and ornaments. The Deep Aradhana, the evening lamp ceremony, marks the end of the day's rituals, bathing the temple in a warm glow. These daily rituals are a testament to the unwavering devotion of the temple priests and the deep spiritual connection between the deity and his devotees. They offer a glimpse into the rich tapestry of Hindu worship and the timeless traditions that continue to thrive within the temple walls. Section 7 when gods descend. The Sri Padmanabhaswami temple comes alive during festivals, with each celebration a vibrant tapestry of faith, culture and tradition. One of the most important festivals celebrated here is the Alpashi festival. This 10-day festival held in October or November commemorates the birthday of Lord Padmanabhaswami. The Alpashi festival is a grand spectacle of religious fervor. The temple is adorned with elaborate decorations and special rituals and prayers are performed. 
The highlight of the festival is the Aratu ceremony, where the deities from the temple are taken out in a grand procession to the Shangumogam beach for a ritualistic bath in the sea. Another important festival is the Pangkuni festival, celebrated in March or April. This festival also lasts for 10 days and culminates in a grand procession of the deities. These festivals are not merely religious observances, they are a celebration of the rich cultural heritage of Kerala, bringing together people from all walks of life in a joyous celebration of faith and tradition.